Tonight on the record, a double dip of presidential candidates. Senator Marco Rubio and Governor Jeb Bush are both here. But first, Senator Rubio and his fellow senator and presidential candidate Ted Cruz battling it out for the number two spot in the GOP race. The two senators going at it over the hot button issue of immigration. Senator Rubio goes, senator Rubio goes on the record from Lancaster, New Hampshire. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Before I get to the issue of immigration, um, sir, what was so important that last Friday, when we had the $1.8 trillion vote in the U.S. Senate on the spending bill, that you uh, were one of two senators yeah. didn't show up? The other was Democrat Senator Barbara Boxer of California. Why weren't you there? Yeah, Greta, because that sort of bill is a typical Washington move. They went behind closed doors. They cut this deal. They sprung it on everybody. They said, here's the take it or leave it vote. The outcome was predetermined. And I'm out running for president, so this never happens again. So we were in Iowa, and we were working hard because we're going to win this election so the American people are no longer subjected to these kinds of votes where the outcome is already predetermined. And at the end of the day, it's an issue there was no transparency it on. It was put together in 48 hours and rammed down the throat of Congress. All right. Well, Senator, um, I mean, it's sort of part of the job. I mean, that's the problem, to vote. And even if it's preordained what the outcome is, doesn't it not send a message to the American people that, well, you thought you had something more important to do? And I should add to it that uh, Senator Ted Cruz did show up. And the reason I know it is because I spent the whole day on Friday waiting to do an interview with him because he was juggling to get to the vote. Well, Greta, again, I was doing something, and that is running for president, so we don't have to keep doing this in the future. I want to win this race so that we have a president that doesn't force us to take the garbage that was in that omnibus that was passed last week. A lot of those things that are in that bill are because we have a president that will not sign it unless it has his pet projects and the things that it had in there, like, for example, no changes whatsoever to the Syrian refugee process, which poses a danger to the United States. I'm running to win so that we have a president that no longer forces upon us votes of this kind. And that's what I was out there doing, and I'm going to continue to do, because I want to win this race so we no longer are faced with these hobbies and choices when it comes to the future of our country. Okay, well, well I'm not going to beat a dead horse, um, but uh, uh, you, you obviously know how I feel about uh, showing up and voting, and, and I won't beat a dead horse further. All right, now, when Senator Cruz was here, I gave him a hard time over immigration and, you know, what his position was on immigration. Um, I want to sort yours out. Um, let's start with the 12 million people here in the United States uh, yeah. illegally. Um, if it were President Marco Rubio today, um, what would you do with those 12 million, if anything? Well, and I'm going to outline for you exactly what we do with the people that are here illegally. But first, I'm going to tell you what we need to do before we get to that point. And that is we have to enforce our immigration laws in the following way. We need to spend about, it's going to cost about four to four and a half billion dollars to put additional metrics and technology on the border. It's cameras, sensors, drones. We need at least 10 to 15, maybe 20,000 new border agents. We need to fully complete the 700 miles of real fencing and walls, not just pedestrian fencing. We need a mandatory e-verify system. We need an entry-exit tracking system to prevent people from overstaying visas. When I'm president, we will do all of those things. And only after we do all of those things, and they are in place, and they are working, and we prove to people that illegal immigration numbers have come down, then we move to, to dealing with the people that are here illegally. And here's what I say. If you've been in this country longer than 12 years, you can pass a background check. If you're a criminal, you can't stay. You've learned English or are learning English. You will be charged a fine. You will be fined for having violated our laws. You will have to start paying taxes, meaning you'll have to be gainfully employed, and you will get a work permit. And that is all you are going to have in a, for at least a decade. And after that decade has expired, I personally am open to allowing them to apply for a green card like anybody else would. That's not a majority position in my party, so it may not be possible to do that. But even the work permit is something that's a lot better than the chaos we have now. But let me be clear, we can't even begin that process I've outlined until we do enforcement first. That's the reason why the Senate bill get, went nowhere in 2013, because it did enforcement and legalization on pretty much a concurrent path, and people were very clear, we don't want it that way. We want enforcement first. Then we can focus on what do you do with the people that are here illegally. As president, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it the right way. Senator, um, uh, I gave you hell for not showing up for vote. I give you a lot of credit for laying out your policy. I couldn't get an answer out of the $12 million from uh, Governor Christie yesterday, and uh, I appreciate the an your answer of what uh, you would propose to do. All right, now turning to um, Secretary Clinton. She said the other night on the debate, did you see the Democratic debate? Well, I couldn't tell it was a Democratic debate or a national or a Saturday Night Live skit, but I caught pieces of it. They were very similar. Uh -huh.
All right, um, Secretary Clinton made the statement, something to the effect that, uh, with regard to ISIS, is that we are we are where we're, we are where we need to be. Um, does she need a really? do-over on that, or do you think that that's what she meant, or was she uh, interpreted incorrectly well, by those who were hitting her for it? It just proves to you how out of touch not just she is, but the president is and the Democratic Party is. You know, headlines today say one of the biggest gifts this holiday season are people are buying guns. They're buying guns not just to exercise their Second Amendment right, which I will protect, but they're buying guns because they feel unsafe. They feel uncertain. They, they don't believe what Hillary Clinton just said, that we finally figured it out. This strategy the president has is no strategy at all. It is, in essence, the same strategy that's allowed ISIS to grow, the same strategy that allowed them to radicalize these people in San Bernardino, the same strategy that's allowed them to continue to pour into Europe and, and continue to capture more territory in the Middle East. We are not where we need to be, and she is so out of touch that that was a scary answer she gave the other night. So it wasn't just a slip. You think that's, that she said exactly what she meant? Absolutely. Well, look, she obviously agrees with the president's foreign policy. She was his secretary of state. And in many ways, the underlying, the underpinnings of ISIS were in place while she was the secretary of state. They allowed Syria to devolve into chaos. They never empowered the non-radical jihadists in Syria, so they were either killed or went into exile. The only groups left were the jihadists, and then the predominant jihadist group became ISIS. They poured over the border and took over Iraq, and now they've spread into Libya, into Afghanistan. They're starting to show up in Lebanon. Yemen, in Lebanon, and, and they have their targets and their sights on Jordan now. This is a very dangerous group, and it took root and began to grow based on the decisions that were made when Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State and under Barack Obama's presidency. Senator, thank you very much for joining us. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and Happy New Year, sir. Merry Christmas. Thank you.